Chapter 16 Bartholomew turned the corner and walked into the study where his uncle and Mr. Bingham stood waiting for him. Walking to the middle of the room, he stood with a stone-cold expression on his face, his hands clasped behind his back. Uncle, Mr. Bingham, you summoned me? Yes, Mr. Bingham said. Young Master Bartholomew, what news have you? Bartholomew took a deep breath. I have followed Bella and Vince for the last three weeks. Each night they go down to the sea after the lamps are lit to dance or watch the stars. They seem to have taken to each other. Reaching inside the inside pocket of his cloak, he drew out a small letter. As I reported last time, Vince often writes Bella's letters. As you requested, I stole one of his letters for you. Bartholomew tossed the letter down on the desk in the middle of the study. Mr. Bingham picked up the letter and examined it carefully, before sitting down and pulling out a fresh piece of parchment and a fountain pen, busying himself with his work. Mr. Strout looked at the letter with satisfaction, then turned to Bartholomew. I had my doubts about you, boy, but these last few weeks you have proven yourself to be very useful. Mr. Strout walked around the desk and took a seat in one of the plush chairs, motioning to the other. Take a seat. There are a few things we must discuss before we proceed. Bartholomew walked over and lowered himself into the seat across from his uncle. Leaning back, his uncle stroked his chin, staring at Bartholomew pensively before beginning. The world is a dangerous place, my young nephew, because it is full of people, and every person is fighting to be on top. Minstrels and artisans sing their silly songs of love and hope, but in the end they too burn their lusts and betray their friends, along with everybody else trying to satisfy their passions. Everybody is the same. If it benefits them, they take it. Sixteen years ago, my esteemed colleague Mr. Bingham and I caught wind that a wealthy doctor would be moving into town with his young daughter, a doctor wealthy enough to boost our estate to number one in power on this side of the Atlantic. Not long after, your father asked me to take you in. Seeing the potential to use you to access the doctor's estate, I agreed to take you. After the doctor moved in, you see, Mr. Bingham befriended him and became his loyal butler, eventually gaining his trust and overseeing the finer details of his estate, including his will. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Bingham added in a prideful tone. In fact, he's even made me the executor over his estate in the unlikely event of his and his daughter's deaths. Mr. Strout glanced at Mr. Bingham with a terrible glimmer in his eye, and for a split second, it looked to Bartholomew as if his uncle was seeing Mr. Bingham in a whole new light. But just as fast as the look had come over his uncle, it vanished, and he continued. Yes, all we needed to do was wait until you and Bella were old enough to wed, and then we could gain power over his estate through you. There was, however, one obstacle. The doctor, being a very generous man, willed his estate across many hands. Mr. Bingham has an uncanny gift for forgery, and so we rewrote the doctor's will, but we could not exclude too many of the recipients in the forged document, lest questions arose later. Therefore, those who we could not omit, we took care of by other means. As it stands, there are only two people that are, how should I put it, capable of receiving their share from the doctor's will. Mr. Strout's eyes flittered quickly to Mr. Bingham, then back to Bartholomew. The first being Bella herself, and the second being a mystery general from years ago, whom if found is to receive a handsome sum of money. This general would have been easy to remove from the will, but as you reported, Bella knows of his allotment and has recently discovered his identity to be none other than Vince's father, Faro Cully. So, my young nephew, we have a final few tasks for you to complete. Mr. Strout stood and looked over at Mr. Bingham, who nodded, holding out a folded letter. Here is a forged letter in Vince's handwriting. You are to make sure it gets to Bella. Give it to her friends and have them deliver it to her tonight. You will also need to make sure that Vince does not make it to their rendezvous this evening. Bartholomew took the letter from his uncle as he handed it to him, tucking it safely inside his cloak. Yes, uncle, he said. What else am I to do? Turning his back to Bartholomew, Mr. Strout walked over to the tall study window and stared through its pane over the city. Dr. Cartwright's usefulness has run its course, he began. We no longer need him. His ship is due to draw into port at midnight tonight. You and your thugs will make sure that does not happen. You will go to the lighthouse where you will find Faro Cully. Kill him. Toss his body into the sea and destroy the, the tower's lens. Faro is no one of importance, so few questions will be asked. An unfortunate accident and shipwreck will take these final two men out of the picture, leaving Bella in complete control over her estate. Once you marry her, it will all be ours. 
Panic gripped Bartholomew's heart. Murder? Was he capable of murder? And Bella, the death of her father would tear her apart. Sir, Bartholomew stuttered, you don't actually intend to murder them, do you? Did I sound like I was joking, boy? Mr. Strout asked quietly. But his uncle whirled around, his long silver knife drawn in his right hand. You forget your place, boy. Don't you even think about casting aside all we have worked towards now. This is for you, boy, for you. Holding the knife up to admire its keen edge, he added in a dangerous tone, You are worried about that little girl, aren't you? Well, don't make the mistake of thinking I cannot achieve my ends without you or without her. There are other ways. However, if you want to see her alive at the end of this, you will do your part. The color drained from Bartholomew's face. Yes, sir, he replied, his heart pounding out of his chest. Very good, his uncle sneered. Mr. Bingham stood behind the desk. Well, what are you waiting for? He asked Bartholomew. You've got post to deliver.